بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله بيه التوفيق to continue our study of 40 hadith and we continue with the study of the hadith about certainty and the title for this chapter is the signs of true certainty if we are really certain and we have yaqeen what are the signs so the late Imam Khomeini says that in this hadith two signs are mentioned one is that people who have certainty they would not be replacing Allah's pleasure with the pleasure of people. Or in other words, they would not be ready to displease Allah by pleasing people. How can someone make such a fundamental mistake if he is certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the soul provider and the sole supplier of everything good. It's impossible. If some believers or many believers do such things, it's because their knowledge has not reached the level of certainty. The second sign, again mentioned in the same hadith, is that people who have certainty would not blame people for what they have not been given. So they understand that people have different degrees, different ranks, different capacities, and everyone would be responsible to act corresponding to what they have been given. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها. Allah would not ask people to do something which is the same for all of them. Proportionate or corresponding to what they have been given, their obligations, their expectations from them vary. So. First, not to displease Allah and instead trying to please people. Number two, not to blame people for what they have not been given. And if instead of these two, someone does the opposite, then it's the sign of weakness or illness of Iman. He says, we have touched upon Iman and fruits of Iman and what is the nature of Iman in different parts of the book. But because this is very important, here we want to have again some discussion about Iman and Yaqeen. He says, people who try to please other people instead of Allah, there is one reason for it. Or at least we can say there is one main reason for it. And that is because they think that they have some influence in getting what they want. He says, برای آن است که آنها را مؤثر در اموری میداند که مورد تمع اوست. 
So he believes that such person or such group can help me in getting what I want. For example, he says, if someone is after money, so he would try to please rich people so that he can get money. He would flatter them. He would try to please them, to get close to them. Or interestingly, he says, some people who are interested in leadership and in position, they try to please people who are lower than them or people who are potentially good followers and good supporters. So although he's going to be their leader, but he tries to please them and say things and makes decisions that would be accepted by them or majority of them. He would not stand by the truth, by justice, because he may lose people. He would, you know, unfortunately, this is the case with many politicians today that because they want popularity, they want to be uh, voted. So they may say things just to please people. And over time, their own ideas, their own positions can change and sometimes can shift from one direction to a contradictory direction because this is the way they think people want. A pious politician may take the risk of having ideas that their followers may not appreciate. And they try to be at the same time that they're a politician to be a good teacher, a good educator, a good mentor. Look at Amir al Mumni alayhi salam, for example, as an you know, excellent example, of course. How many times he made decisions that the people who were uh, apparently or superficially on his side, they were not happy. And many times in Nahfil Balagha, he complains. So he was not changing his view based on the opinion of those people who were interested in maybe more worldly pleasure, more comfort, etc. Of course, a good politician is always seeking opinion of people, consults, uh, statistics, feedback, all are important. But in the end of the day, there are some red lines that you cannot cross, even if you are losing your followers, if you are losing your popularity. In the end of the day, you have to stand by them. But if there is flexibility or if your followers are mu'minin, then of course, you have to pay more attention to their view, more and more. So, he says, some people who want riyas, uh, they want to have some, you know, leadership and position, what they do is that they flatter their followers. They try to please their followers so that they remain with them. Only people who are really seeking the pleasure of Allah and have abandoned dunya they can remain with haq. Otherwise, people who have not reached this point may try to please people that they think through them, they can get what they want. So this is one point. Then it says, based on this, then we can divide people into two groups, two general groups. First, <coughs> excuse me. People that because they have yaqeen, they know very well, not just as a theory. This has become part of their understanding of even themselves and the world, everything. This is part of the mentality and mindset that the whole world is under Allah's will and Allah's control, Allah's command. 
and they would not see anything next to him, let alone na'udhu above him and prior to him. It's not that they say, okay, we have to please this person right now, not Allah, because he is the one who makes the decision. He's the one who has money. No, they know that Allah is the sole provider and everything is under his command. This beautiful ayah, Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 26. Qulillahumma malika al mulk, tu'ti al mulka man tasha, wa tanza'u al mulka min man tasha. They believe in this wholeheartedly that all the things are finally in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, they know that the key to success is to please Him not to please people by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they see everyone is in need, everyone is faqir. Ya ayyuhan nas antumul fuqara illallah. My boss maybe has some influence right now. But that influence, first of all, is subject to decline, to change, and compared to Allah's influence is nothing. We don't say, don't respect the worldly channels, worldly means. Don't pay attention to people, for example, who have power or you know, money or who employ you or are employed by you. No, we don't say that. But we say all this must be in an atmosphere of servitude to Allah and knowing that these are all his servants and means. He may use them, he may use other means. So this is one group of people. Another group of people are the people that he says, as haq bi khabarand, ya agar khabar darand, khabar naqis wa iman ghayr tam. People who know nothing about God and the reality of this world, about the truth, or even if they know, it's very uh, incomplete and their Iman is incomplete. There are lots of deficiencies in their Iman. And therefore, they see these asbab, these causes, and these uh, means independent. And they think they by themselves can do something. And therefore, if they see that there is a you know, quick way and that is to please this person and forget about pleasing Allah that may take long. Or for example, his answer may come late. Let me please this person and get what I want quickly. This is a second group of people that because of the weakness of Iman, they think these things can do uh, independently something. And such people, Interestingly, then they become very critical of servants of Allah, of other people. They expect from them too much or you know, they judge them too much. The first group who are actually more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have more positive opinion about people because they don't see them in charge and they don't expect from them, you know, you know, give me this, give me that. They have put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if, for example, their boss, their manager, I don't know, doesn't give them that much or doesn't promote them, doesn't raise their rank, don't blame that much that person. Because they know that he's not the key factor. And this is not also everything for me. But the second group, they expect from people more and many times they become uh, very critical of people. 
The next chapter is about the idea of the Mu'tazilite and Asharites, about risk. Imam Khomeini said, the late Allah Majlisi rahmatullah alayhi in Mir'atul Uqul. Mir'atul Uqul is a very good book by Allah Majlisi, which is commentary on Al Kafi. In Mir'atul Uqul, Allah Majlisi first evaluates the hadith. It says, what he thinks about the chain of this hadith. Is it Sahih, is it Hassan, is it Laif, etc. Although Al-Kafi is a very reliable book, very respected book, but as we have you know, said many times, and our ulama, of course, have taught us, even for Qutub Arba'i, we don't think they are all authentic. We don't have any Sahih in the sense that, you know, our Sunni brothers say we have Saha set, six Saha, we say no. The only book that from cover to cover is Sahih is the Quran for us. Even Al-Kafi with all the respect that we have. We study every Hadith one by one. The chain of narrators must be studied one by one. And Allah and Majlisi, that maybe some people think he was a person that he just tried to put everything together in Biharul Anwar. He's not such person. He's a great scholar as well. And he has great way of commenting and evaluating hadith. In Mir'atul Uqul, his task was to verify the hadith. I mean, evaluate them, whether they can be verified or not, and then to comment. Very beautiful book. So in Mir'atul Uqul, which means the mirror of the intellects, he says there is a question. And whether, the question is whether rizq maqsum, the sustenance which is distributed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, includes haram or it's only halal. If someone, for example, steals something and eats, is it coming from Allah or not? Asha'iras say everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mu'tazilites say only rizq halal comes from Allah. Haram is not coming from Allah. And Allah Majlis, he says the Shia also believe this and he also prefers this, that only rizq halal is from Allah. Imam Khomeini says, we have to understand this issue under the light of the issue of Jabr al-Tafrif. You remember we said in Aqai that according to the Shia, based on what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam taught, la jabra wa la tafweed, bal amrun bayna amran. The idea of Ash'arites was jabra. Everything is predestined. Idea of Mu'tazila was tafweed. Everything is delegated by God to human beings when it comes to the voluntary things. Both are wrong. And Imam Khomeini says, actually, the idea of tafwiz is worse than the idea of Jabra. Because how can you say everything goes out of Allah's hand? Although Jabra is also wrong, but he says, at least Jabra has some, you know, superficial legitimacy or plausibility, you can say. But both are wrong. And we believe that there is a middle position, status between two status. Here also, he says, if Mu'tazilas and some Shiites who say only rizq halal comes from Allah, they mean that with respect to rizq haram, 
Allah has no control, no role, and it's only left to people and people are responsible, then this is tafiz and this is wrong. And if Asharites say that everything comes from Allah, means that people have no control, again, this is wrong. So we can say all kinds of things that come, come from Allah, but with this point that when it comes to halal, he is also pleased with that. He has al-irada to tashri'iyya as well as al-irada to takrim. But when it comes to haram, he doesn't have irade tashri'i, he's not pleased with that, although his irade takbin, generative will is there. I think that uh, maybe both of our ulama, you know, Allah and Majlisi and people like him and Imam Khomeini, both of them are right. And maybe the issue is this, that Although everything is finally from Allah and every action is from Allah, good action or bad action, they cannot bypass his will. It's not that if someone makes a bad action, he has gone away from his control. No, according to Tawhid Af'ali, unity with respect to his action, everything is an act of God finally and ultimately. So all kinds of risk and anything that happens come from him. But I think maybe what Allah Majlisi says is that only halal is considered to be risk, which comes from Allah. And if Allah says that he provides us with risk and men dabbatan illa ala Allah rizquha, it means halal risk. And I actually believe, maybe in some lectures also you have uh, heard, I, I'm sure in home I have discussed this, but maybe also in some lectures in case the other places, that I believe actually haram is not a risk. Risk is only halal. That risk comes from Allah and it's only pure and present. Anything which is not halal is not a risk, although it comes from Allah from a philosophical point of view. But this was not my risk, or other words, this was not what Allah had planned for me. Allah only plans the best for me, the pleasant and tired things for me. He would not feed his servants with haram. He would feed them with pleasant. So in this sense, maybe we can say, what Allah Majlis he said was very true. The next chapter is about the fact that comfort of the soul, even body, of course, because many times, unless your soul is at rest, your body cannot be at rest. Uh, but to begin with, comfort of the soul is in yaqeen and reza, in certainty and pleasure. If I have certainty and I want to please Allah, I do what I can and then won't, don't worry. Because why? Because I have to please one person who is actually the most you know, merciful person. And he's very you know, easygoing person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although he is very uh, much examining. He is very carefully examining, but if he decides <laughs> for people that have been taking it, uh, you know, very difficult for people, making it very difficult for others or have promoting themselves too much, or who are arrogant, yes. Maybe it would make it very, very, you know, difficult. And this is su ul hasab. But for people that have been kind to others and humble and doing, you know, what they could, Allah is very easy going with them, very flexible. 
یا سری ارزا is very easily pleased like you know parents if you work for your parents they are easily pleased compared to a stranger if you have a kind you know I don't know boss you will be easily pleased just you have to make sure that you really paid attention and you had good intention you tried as much as you could and then he would be flexible and if he sees that there are shortcomings he would ignore or he would help you or maybe he would do the rest of the work because he's kind Allah is very kind and very flexible and gentle with his good servants therefore if I have only to please him it's easy but if I have to please many many people then I am in trouble. Allah Mathalan Rajulan Fi Hishuraka Mutasha Kisun wa Rajulan Salaman the Rajul. Haliasavya on a masala. Suppose someone is servant of one master and has to police that one master. Someone is uh, to police several masters which themselves also have different opinions. Are they the same? Plus, you know, many times when we are dealing with people, they may get misinformation you know, from us, you know, about us, think negatively, maybe I cannot explain, maybe I feel embarrassed. I don't know, there can be many problems with people. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm sure that he understands me better than I understand myself. He knows my limits, he knows everything. And he doesn't have, you know, a good day and bad day. <laughs> He's always good. So, such people would not have hosn and ham. They would not have, you know, sadness and concern, uh, except about their own performance. That, did I really work hard? Did I really try to you know, be sincere, etc.? They don't have problem about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, they have comfort of the soul and when this has impact on the body and other things. But other people have lots of worries and concerns and you know, disturbance. And he says, we see the people of Dunya are always, you know, uh, in trouble and they have never comfort of heart or body and sometimes in the day and night they work there is greed and there is a kind of thirst which is never satisfied never quenched okay alhamdulillah we finished this hadith 32 inshallah the next hadith hadith 33 is about walaya and about ma'rifa of imams and about refuting the idea that some people have who think that if you have wilaya, then you don't need to worry about your action. Whatever you do, it's okay. And with wilaya, with marifa, sins are not going to create problem, etc. Failure to do what you want is not about. Some people may think like this. Uh, this is going to be refuted. And Hadith 33 and the commentary on that Hadith would be related to this. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the gift of Yaqeen. Yaqeen is such a great gift that if we get our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change, changes and then the way we receive also a response from him would change. I believe that Yaqeen is like other spiritual aids that we talked about in you know, some places, especially that series of lectures about spiritual aids and empowering tools yarin is something that 
when it comes to equation, it changes the situation. And therefore, people who don't have yaqeen cannot understand. You know, if I don't have yaqeen, actually, mostly worldly causes may decide for me. If I have yaqeen, it is as if Allah comes more obviously into equation. And he says, for this servant of mine who has certainty, I should play more obvious role. Uh, I said it in a very brief way, but inshallah, maybe in some other places we can explain this. May Allah inshallah give us the gift of yaqeen, certainty, and help us to achieve his pleasure, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. May Allah bless you, inshallah. There's a... Uh...